Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha Gupta from ENY Investor Relations. Thank you and over to you. Thank you, Yashashri. Good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to the Q1 FY24 earnings call of 3i Infotech. The results and investor presentation have already been mailed to you and you can also view it on our website at www.3iinfotech.com. To take us through the results and to answer your questions, today we have top management of 3i Infotech Limited, represented by Thompson Ganam, Managing Director and Global CEO, Shushan Purushan, Chief Operating Officer, Enterprise Services and CRO India, Sachs Krishna, Chief Operating Officer, Digital and Next Gen Business, Harish Chinoy, Chief Operating Officer, Professional Services and Chief Risk Officer, Sanjay Rava, Chief Financial Officer, T.S. Mohan, Chief Human Resources Officer, Varika Rastogi, Company Secretary and Legal Head. Thompson will start the call with a business update, which will be then followed by Shushant, who will provide us an Indian Enterprise Services business update. Tax will provide the update on the value business and new Bharat retail project. And then we will open the floor for Q&A session. As usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is said on this call that reflects any outlook for the future or which can be construed as forward-looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainties that we face. These risks and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus file with SEBI and subsequent annual report that you can find it on our website. With this, I will now hand over the floor to Thompson. Over to you, Thompson. Thank you, Asha. Hello, everybody. Uh, good day to everybody. I will begin this, uh, the summary of this quarterly results and briefly about the business events that have occurred during the quarter and outlook on the microeconomic situation as well. For the first quarter of financial year 24, we have registered a revenue of 194.4 crores, representing a growth of 8.5% year on year and 2.1% quarter on quarter. Our gross margin from the business was 16.5% during the quarter. The growth was driven by continuous effort and consistent effort to establish new services under the new Ray brand, which drive the digital and mixed in business and to expand in other new sectors and new industries. The goal since we executed the car walk was to build a services business which is sustainable and profitable in the long run and drive to positive EBITDA. And I'm happy to inform that the quarter we achieved our milestone with a positive EBITDA of 1.3 crores minus the Railtel large project. So for us, uh, though the results in EBITDA are negative, but from a business model perspective, in our effort to build sustainable profitability, this is a very, very important milestone for us where we have aimed to hit our first 1.3 crore profitability with all our lines of business of run, grow, and next-gen businesses. So this is an important point for us and an inflection point for the organization. And we hope to build on this momentum and to build on sustainable, profitable model for this year. And as for us, we are building a year of execution excellence, which is our focus area for this year. During the contract uh, uh, the quarter, uh, we've been adding 32 new contracts or lines of businesses with existing and new customers. It's a very important part for us as we build this business. These new contracts will be very, very important for us to grow these uh, revenues uh, positively and also to bridge the erosions we have in some of our geographies, especially in uh, some of the Western geographies where there are severe headwinds, which is the industry is facing overall. The revenue mix, uh, shift, uh, uh, shift is also happening very clearly. If you look at it from uh, from our volume and a value mix, or our run and grow mix, which we have been consistently using for the last two years, a very clear shift is happening where our value businesses and our, uh, our premium volume businesses are all starting to uh, uh, drive growth very steadily. Also want to quickly talk about a few highlights and business events, and I'll, I'll probably allow my other colleagues to expand on it uh, in the first year of time. Our new Ray Bharat network is commercially ready, uh, which is our uh, Railtel project, and, uh, our, and we are launching our mobile app uh, in August 2023, which will be a very, very important uh, milestone uh, in a journey to build a super app and build sustainable uh, revenues. And 
I, I would probably, uh, well, on, on this point, probably I'll just touch upon some of the, the last six months. You know, we've been busy trying to ramp up this project and the pre-operating cost uh, and the minimum guarantees for Q1 uh, had been taken up uh, in quarter one as part of the overall project plan as well. And I'll allow Sachs to expand on this uh, particular uh, project when he uh, uh, talks about it. Uh, New Ray Future Tech uh, is one of our flagship IIT tech park. We've been constantly investing on cognitive computing and AI uh, related uh, uh, products and platforms, which also enables and drives next generation services in terms of uh, prescriptive and next best action. I'm happy to announce our first paying customer for our TXO DSS mission support system product uh, platform has been acquired, uh, which will offer prescriptive and next best action uh, effectively. And this is for uh, our credit union customer in, in US, and then now we are expanding into healthcare in uh, 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 UK as well. So this is a very ext extremely important milestone. Uh, we got our first 400K order, uh, which is a very important uh, milestone. This also will change dramatically the entire profitability uh, mix as well. Uh, uh, and also, uh, we've also got our first customer uh, for our predictive and prescriptive analytics and uh, uh, demand forecasting uh, product as well. Uh, which is also uh, a very important uh, milestone, and uh, SACS will expand on this. With regard to our digital infrastructure management services, it's been a main spearhead of growth in uh, Q1. Uh, there are multiple large deals we have, uh, uh, we have acquired, and, uh, and, and, and now uh, we need to see how we can leverage this growth momentum, uh, not just in India, but also to see leverage how, this, uh, how can we leverage this globally as well uh, as uh, some of the other lines of businesses across the world are slowing down. And I will request uh, Sushant to expand on it uh, once he uh, comes to talk about this. Uh, and, and, and also, uh, we also quickly had some good wins in the uh, U.S., uh, in our existing customer space where we have been able to add new lines of businesses uh, uh, to the tune of almost 2.4 million uh, TCB, uh, where we have been able to add uh, cognitive computing and also the first time we have done a customer experience transformation uh, for, our, uh, uh, for our existing customer and uh, SAC can expand on it uh, uh, more in detail. Uh, so broadly, uh, from an overall environment perspective, if you look at it, uh, North America and U.S. is going to be a challenge for the entire industry, and, and we are no exception to that. And uh, it's uh, uh, very importantly we need to quickly, uh, uh, you know, change the revenue mix uh, because some of the traditional lines and some of the traditional lines for professional services, or uh, human capital management, are under stress uh, across the industry, and uh, we are no exception. And uh, there is definitely degrowth which is happening there, and uh, we need to figure out how to bridge those gaps. And uh, even our results are, uh, we, we look at it very positively because, you know, relatively it might look only at 2% growth, but uh, the net growth is there still in spite of erosions which are happening in some of these uh, territories. So that's the way I would request uh, the shareholders to look at the overall performance. Uh, and then uh, it, um, probably if you look at it and some of the other key points uh, would be, uh, there are certain other issues in terms of the the p &L and balance sheet items, which I don't want to expand right now. Maybe we have some uh, 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 questions which are there and FAQ questions. Uh, so probably what I would do is uh, I would uh, uh, pause here and uh, maybe I'll allow my other colleagues to uh, expand on some of the points I've spoken. And then we'll probably get into a more detailed uh, uh, Q&A and questions where we could probably answer some of the results and some of the other very specific financial uh, aspects as well where Sanjay can, uh, you know, come in and expand on that. I'll pause your uh, uh, debate on Asha. Sushant? Yeah, Asha. Hey, thanks, Samson. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sushant here. Uh, let me just give you the enterprise business, uh, which I drive has three important business lines. Uh, one is digital infrastructure services, then digital BPS, and e-governance business. So, Coming back to Q1 point of view, I would like to highlight uh, what we have done in Q1. Uh, it's a good Q1 for us. Uh, we have overall closed around 40 crores of order book ACV and 100 crores of uh, contracts. Out of the three important contracts, I would like to highlight uh, in this uh, thing. Uh, first, we won a very significant deal from uh, Indian Oil Corporation that is predominantly for a data center contract. This is a new contract addition to what we are supporting all their branches and outlets. Uh, this contract gives us uh, value to us because we are managing their core applications, which is an oil uh, corporation run, which is predominantly an Oracle, 
their refining application, their billing application altogether. So the KRA for us to maintain their data center 24 bar 7 and provide the value to them. Uh, this contract is typically a 14 crores contract for three years, and uh, which is moving us from our edge support to a core support uh, to the line. Next, I would like to mention uh, we picked up one of the significant contracts from one of the private banks in India, fourth, the fifth largest in private bank. Uh, this is one of the significant contracts because we will go to manage their core banking data center operations, one of the significantly important uh, uh, section within the banking network. Uh, we're going to maintain the data center operation, which runs their TCS core banking applications and all the applications which are residing in Mumbai and Hyderabad as well. So this is a contract is somewhere between uh, uh, 45 crores contract for two years. And the good things to know that we are gone live in 45 days and incumbent was uh, repro here. So we're gone live in 45 days, which is one of the significant milestones, and now we are moving into a transformation phase of this contract as well. The third important contract we have won in this quarter one is uh, from an enterprise vertical, uh, where we have not been present there. That is called Bajaj Electrical. Uh, we have won the contract in Bajaj Electrical to manage their uh, digital infrastructure services, cloud, security, and network, and various other operations also as well. This is also a significant contract because this enables us to get into their uh, enterprise segment. We are also managing their dealer and distribution network as well. This is an old uh, 19 crores contract for uh, five years, but it's a great uh, breakthrough for us. Uh, but what, what we'd like to bring here is all of these contracts we fought with uh, the MNC players, like in, in IDSC, we have NTT, Kindrel, and Wipro. Badaj Electric will have an Accenture, Kindrel. So basically, we have been elevating ourselves, you know, your tire one player in this space. And we look forward to particulate the growth in coming quarter as well. We have some more uh, successes also in the second quarter. Uh, we are in the advanced stage of closing queues. And I hope uh, in uh, days comes, we're going to announce that as well. Thumbs uh, this is my brief uh, side for my side. Hey, thanks, Shashank. And uh, maybe, uh, Sachs, you could probably, uh, you know, get in and talk about the progress in uh, digital and next-gen business, and especially on next expand on the NBN as well. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Thompson. I'm so delighted to be addressing this audience today. Thank you very much, everybody, for the time. I'll have two uh, kind of narratives here, as Thompson mentioned. First, let me take up the, the Nurek Bharat Network, the rental collaborated Wi-Fi monetization project. Um, you know, it's a very interesting project. So it's accordingly, there's a lot of interest from the market and shareholders. Let me address that first. There are two, uh, there are two sections of updates I'd like to give on, on this business. One is the tech update because it's technologically led proposition, which is how we got into this partnership of, uh, with, uh, with, with, with Railton. And the second aspect is how is the business getting acquired? How are we more truly monetizing and going way beyond the minimum guarantee that we've committed to Railton? So on the tech update, there were, our initial approach going in was to leverage the existing assets of Railton, which obviously was not tuned for, for this level of monetization, so we had to go ahead and develop uh, tech stacks ourselves. The three tech stacks we're developing, um, and I'll come to each of the each of the stages. One is the ability for people to land on the mobile to a page, which can then be the driver for monetization through ads. So for for, for serving advertisers and putting those advertisements on that platform. That's called capsule portal. The second is the, what we call the AAA server, which is another tech stack which is required to authenticate and drive the user to the particular page, whether they are an authenticated user or a new user. The third is the ad server, which actually serves the ad, the actual ad by size, whether it's video or still ad. So these are mainly three tech platforms that we had to put in. Obviously, like any other tech platforms where there is no precedence, this is a platform which doesn't exist at this scale, 6,100 stations, 23 million travelers, 1.2 to 1.6 million logins, unique logins every day. is not a scale that has been addressed in the industry, forget India, even in the world. So obviously it took us some time to understand the complexities and the vagaries. We've gone past all of that. And now the status is all these three platforms are at, 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 at the capital portal is already on, like Thompson mentioned, it's already gone live. We are fully operating for business. If any of you gentlemen go to any station and click on the SSID called Railwire, you'll actually see our platform working with our logo also on top of it. So you can actually experience what I'm saying in words. 
that's the capital portal. The second platform is the is the ad server, which is also fully integrated, so it's on, so it's able to serve as the third platform, which is to play to the final stages of testing, and that should go into production in the next seven to eight days. So we're fully uh, equipped, if you make from a tech platform, tech stack perspective, because it collects data, and the data will then be used for analyzing what kind of users, what kind of eyeballs are we targeting, and therefore bring them back to the advertiser. So that completes the ability to deliver the value proposition that we originated and assumed with going into this partnership. So what are we doing with this tech platforms being ready, right? So that's our go-to-market strategy. There are really four channels of go-to-market that we're focusing on. Each of them will have various degrees of maturity as we speak. The first channel is what we call programmatic ads. This is what comes from Google. Uh, places ads, as you all know, if you're a Gmail user, you'll have those pop-up ads coming in based on the emails you're browsing or the sites that you're browsing. It's the same concept that Google will serve ads on our platform too, for which there is an integration required with Google, which we have done. It is getting now uh, into the into the flow of bringing in those ads. Just to let you know, Google ads platform comprises approximately 80% of all ads that are, that are ever placed in the in the world. So, so we're integrating with that. We're also integrating with other SSPs, inside partners, uh, as the industry calls them, uh, besides Google, to get the programmatic ads in place. What the beauty about this is, it's non-linear. It's not human-centric. We don't have we don't have to have sales feet on the street to be able to get these ads. So we can scale very quickly. The second channel is going after going and attracting large enterprises slash PSUs, because they do have a lot of budget, they do have a lot of messaging that they need to take to Bharat, which is a unique proposition of this platform. So we have close to 50 plus crores of pipeline at various stages of closure uh, with the PSUs and large enterprises. These are direct sales, these are based on relationships, and they are very, you know, very advanced stages of, 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 of closure from a pipeline perspective. The third channel, is what we call direct ads from medium to semi-large enterprises. This is a very, very large market, which is made up of local retailers and small enterprises pan India. In order to cover this market, we need an innovative sales approach, not the conventional feet in the street because the model won't sustain the sales cost. So what you've done is we have put a virtual sales organization, which is far less expensive, which will sell without actually meeting the customer, certain type of ads, certain type of customers, which is one channel. The second channel is a direct sales organization, very minimal, but again, going after some key accounts that we can convert them into, into ad revenue. The fourth channel, uh, uh, which is also very, very uh, compelling, is the OTT content monetization. So what we've done is, we have, part, we have started partnering and onboarding and orchestrating uh, content from various content, various OTT players. But what is most important is we've developed a blockchain-based OTT orchestration platform. Going back to our tech, uh, 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 you know, bias towards the business, we have deployed. We deployed a blockchain-based OTT orchestration platform, one of its kind. Doesn't exist in India. In fact, this is a once it becomes successful, we're going to take this to all media houses across the globe. It's that powerful platform. And we're using that to monetize OTT content. So your typical sachet, if you may, 25 rupees for 30 minutes of OTT content. Kind of an example of how you can place ads and how you can gain money from the OTT platform. So those are the four channels of business or revenue that we're going to generate. So, so the minimum guarantee of the 14 points and close that we have to pay to, to, to the Intel which can be easily serviced just by the one channel of revenue, which is the PSUs and large enterprises. I mentioned the pipeline of 50 crores. That alone can service the minimum guarantee, but all the other lines of business just scale way beyond that, which is the original proposition of this enterprise. So that's on the that's on the new red bottom network, the Intel uh, kind of an update. Let me move on to the other aspects of our business, which is what we're calling as a value business, or we're calling digital business and next-gen services which is made up of multiple business lines as we start with, start with cloud first. So cloud first is a big, big arrowhead for us, right from the time the car vote happened, we had designed that. And, and, and cloud first for us being transformation in cloud infrastructurally and transformation in cloud from a business impact perspective. So both those large narratives, if you may, have been broken down into specific products and services that are going into the marketplace. And we've already got enough customers 
that are gaining now both from a security, either security product, all the way to cloud adoption in the box. So I'll talk about uh, the numbers that it is contributing, at least from a percentage perspective, so you can get a, you can get a fair sense of where this is going from a from a, from overall business. The second business that probably comes to mention is our new day future tech, which is which is uh, into cognitive computing. Uh, we have. Uh, really taken that into into two things. There are many many use cases for cognitive computing, obviously. But what we are taking is place offerings which can be replicable, which can be scalable, which can go across the globe, not just in one region. So we are, we are developing a demand forecasting system for a utilities company, which is a very very unique problem. So dynamic demand forecasting, which we can then replicate across gas and utility companies, you know, across the globe. We're taking what is what we call the the, the actionable decision support system. Uh, otherwise, we're calling it the CXO cockpit, which uh, uh, the company mentioned we have one or the first order. There are few more which are already in the advanced stage of pipeline. So that business is kind of. As they develop IP, it is also becoming a creator in terms of getting paying customers. Yeah, so that's so that's a, that's, that's the second line of business. The, the, the third line that I like to highlight is is our is our digitally intervened business process as a service, where we are where we are utilizing again insights based on analytics in an interaction center, in a call center, in a tech support center, in an outbound sales uh, center, or we are taking. Uh, uh, a claims automation platform and merging that with the actual claims adjudicators so we can get better value for our customers. So that's the second line of business where we're gaining traction. We already have one of the largest TPAs in India as a customer for the claims management process that I just talked about. We also have banks that are coming up with us for doing their collections and outbound sales for CASA as well as taking up their inbound customer support for offerings like FastTag. So that's a growing business for us. And that's going to grow as we go through this year. The last but not the least is our consulting business, which is which is uh, which is we, we, we turn to the beauty and mass stuff. That is becoming a, a, a naturally digital transformation. Most engagement starts with consulting, and this for this unit is helping us as a spearhead, as the first landing port, if you may, for our prospects and customer engagements, where they define the plan of digital transformation, where they define the plan of what they need to achieve as a business outcome, which then drives vertical products across the business line, whether it's applications, it's a cloud, or the GBPS, or, uh, or, or future tech. So that's kind of the, kind of the update, if you may, and I'll, I'll, I'll wait for questions and I can answer them directly. Uh, and I'll rest here and uh, pass the microphone back to Asha Divakar. I now hand over the floor to Mr. Divakar Pingley. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, hi, this is Devaka. I think before we get on to the Q&A, I uh, just want to kind of uh, bring to you know, to the post the results declaration. I think a bunch of you investors uh, who have been closely following the company and some of you who have been long-term shareholders have sent us uh, a lot of questions. Uh, so the interest of uh, transparency uh, and uh, you know, to ensure that the other participants on the call also understand what those uh, questions are, what we thought was we're going to kind of read out those questions that have come by email to us, including naming the person that has sent us the email, uh, and uh, you know, and uh, uh, Thompson and his team will actually go over uh, trying to explain to the best extent possible as to you know how we're addressing that or what the issues are, and post that once those questions have been answered, maybe some of you will get a fair sense of you know what the background is and uh, you know how the company kind of. Uh, you know, taking action. Uh, post that, we'll kind of throw it open to the general audience here for the Q&A again. Uh, so with that said, uh, I'll hand over the floor to Asha. Asha, if you can possibly first state the name of the investor and then, uh, you know, uh, state the questions one at a time, which Thompson and his team can answer, and then we'll move to the next question. Thank you. Sure, Yorkan. Thank you. So uh, we'll start the questions. Uh, received from Purushottam, an individual investor. First question from him is, in FY22, 3i team made huge provisions to cover PDD, approx rupees 160 million in Q2 FY22. While during the call uh, last time, he raised an issue and he was told that while 3i will collect this, his, this money from market, but we are not just providing it from compliance perspective, I was also told that at least 50% of this provided amount will surely be collected. Till date, till date, there is no trace of what happened to that excess provision and reversal. 
Similarly, there was double provision for employee bonus made in Q2 FY22 with the justification that we are changing the provision norm for this year onwards and henceforth we will provide the bonuses for the current financial year in advance. As a result of that, Q2 FY22 earnings took a double hit of bonus provisions. If this was correct, then the base effect of this double provisioning should have given positive impact on profitability in corresponding quarter in next financial year. But the same never happened. Over to you, Sanjay. Uh, thanks, Asha. Uh, I'll take the first part uh, of the provisioning uh, to the, this case is actually uh, out of the uh, amount that was stated in the PDD of 16 crores, we have collected the stated amount of more than 50% already as we begin Q2. Uh, the further plan I would like, uh, you know, push, uh, Sushant to get, get up to with what's the plan. Uh, I'd also like to go to, in the meantime, the second part of the question. Well, we have said we have taken a double hit on account of bonus provisions. Uh, we have actually provided uh, the amount that was approved by the board as part of the provision in the relevant years. Uh, so uh, it's not that we have taken a double hit in our books. Uh, so that's the question that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's an incorrect way to kind of reflect. Uh, I would anyway like to answer to Purushottam on a specific point that he may have uh, on a on a one on one call to get this addressed. So, uh, Susha, can you take on the how bonus provision is part? Yeah, so, uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, I understand uh, we are focusing this as a key area. The one of the largest transactions in this provision period was uh, Bihar Planning and Development, where there was a in 2019 the, the amount was being held by that uh, department. Uh, we have uh, moved away, uh, to the, seek the legal option here because there was a discussion happen and it's going in the right track right now. There are uh, first time that the first hearing has come up and we're hopeful that that will go to clear us because once the uh, majority of 25% of the balance is, comes from this particular department as well. Uh, there's one more significant help to have uh, improvement happen. Um, there was a ranchy smart city project we executed through a consultant called Stoop Consultant and there is a good discussion happen. And uh, they have agreed to, you know, forward to pay us uh, on that basis or to a basis. So having said that, yes, we'll be closely working on this to ensure whatever is recoverable from us will be received uh, in coming quarters. Thanks. Thank you. Second question from Purushottam is, billing rate of 3i in on-site geographies is even lesser than the minimum wage norm. How is that possible? Special mention of USA billing rates here. There seems to be something terribly wrong happening in the US billing. The billing rates and the cost of resources always move in sync, but this equation in case of 3i is completely out of sync. I have highlighted this issue of per person realization issue many a times in earnings call, but I have never got any satisfactory answer till date. Over to you, Thompson. Yeah, sure. I'll take this question. I think we have discussed about this as well multiple times. Uh, maybe like what uh, Sanjay said, we need to have a maybe a, a slightly uh, deeper uh, industry level conversation. Uh, maybe we cannot solve it at this particular call for sure. Uh, uh, because, you know, we need to get on the same page on, you know, where 3i three three was uh, two years ago uh, when the car wash happened and when the slump sale happened and what was the residual business. It's very important for us to understand that. And I've told this multiple times as well, you know, this cannot be compared with any other industry peers because 3i was never a services company. What we are building today in the last one, two years is a services company. So there cannot be any parallels on this in terms of, you know, any tier one or any tier two established players in terms of billing rates or whatever. Because a lot of the businesses in US, as I've been telling consistently, these are onshore businesses, nothing to do with offshore. Even in onshore, we have uh, uh, lower billing rates because relatively because you might be doing a subcontractor work for another player. Obviously, there are thinner margins and there are even more headwinds right now in terms of the uh, pricing pressures there. So that is the impact. I, I think we need to have a more uh, detailed conversation. You know, Asha and, uh, you know, uh, Devaka, I would probably say that we should have a, probably a, uh, another meeting uh, where uh, interested people in the industry in the next level of conversation are more than happy to discuss it in uh, thread back. Uh, and I think we to get on the same page. Yeah. Sure. Sure, Thompson. Thanks. Third question from Pushottam's line is, 
exchange fluctuation benefits or loss in case of 3i in three quarters has been abnormally abnormally high uh, approx 20% of revenue whereas this figure for all other companies is always less than 1% of revenue even if we look at 3i's past record the exchange fluctuation impact has never been so high we never got any satisfied answer for this issue suddenly in q1 fy23 results this component component has come down drastically to sanal levels so how is that possible sanjay yeah let me uh, so to add to your this uh, point uh, we have our exchange fluctuation uh, for last year has been less than 10% Uh, so I am curious to understand how this is at 20%, uh, which has been stated in the in this particular note. Uh, further, uh, as I briefed in our earlier, uh, you know, early fall as well, we had amended our STTR policy last year, uh, which stated that our foreign exchange uh, translation, which was early happening at the on the basis of an integral operation, has been changed to a non-integral operation. So, which is more primarily to do with the way our subsidies work in alignment. To, so, some subsidies are even more, uh, I would say, uh, operating guidelines for them to operate on their own. So, this is how we have uh, instituted the non-integral policy, which has led to the exchange gain of uh, this amount. And I don't see this happening at a large scale now going forward because this was due to a one-time adoption of this policy. for the current year we found, we would uh, find the exchange gain uh, to be uh, in line with earlier in and other i would say in line with our, in the like companies and we are revisiting our uh, you know hedge policy for the current year which would be in place by q2 end thank you sanjay next question is uh, despite getting new order Or, and also the inherent escalation clause in manpower contracts why there is no revenue growth happening uh, the single digit revenue growth reported by pi in rupee terms get automatically done even with the devaluation of rupee that has happened in last 12 months so where is the growth what contract they are losing and what is the overall revenue impact on that account is just not shared so there is no revenue built up confidence coming up from management 1 billion dollar carrot has been kept far away in 2030 so till 2030 arrives no one knows how that revenue will happen when the last two years the growth has been 9 to 10% over to you thompson yeah thanks asha so so uh, just to kind of you know uh, expand on this particular question from uh, uh, Paul Shortman is uh, very clearly there are two three aspects of it you know we have kind of uh, broken our businesses into professional services which is your traditional hcm business uh, which is entire it industry uh, does that the enterprise services which you know shashank spoke about and the value business or the traditional business or next gen business which uh, uh, sai spoke about what we inherited as a team last two years ago was predominantly the volume business which was predominantly professional services or without a volume side of the uh, enterprise business so that's where it is so if you look at it a revenue mix change has been happening and uh, systematically the first year was where we are building all these new lines of businesses which never existed so that i think every shareholder should be first uh, aware of and be very clear because year one was a year of building these new lines of businesses forget about building new products and platforms being in parity to compete in the market even in your enterprise services and distribution is takes some time because it was not readily available so year one was spent only on retaining your uh, existing businesses doing it the second year today if you look at it where we have completed last year is where truly the revenue mix change is happening and you will see in our uh, segment reporting as well in fact we are changing our segment reporting into more uh, details from q2 onwards i think sanjay is working on that where we will have more expanded segment reporting so it has very clear clarity in terms of what was the old traditional business we inherited where it is today and what are the new lines of businesses how are they going what are the next generation businesses where their margins are going at least if you look at our segment reporting right now if you look at our cloud first business which is one of our new lines of businesses very clearly if you see there's a very clear upward uh, you know movement which is there and you see the gross margin movement in that as well and similarly the next generation business which is now starting with sax spoke about all this will start showing a huge uh, margin uh, change which will happen 
specifically on the revenue terms, yes, of course, we are facing pressure in US in terms of the uh, professional services business. There is pressure. There is uh, definitely there's pressure. We are not running away from it. We spoke about it. Uh, we had impact of green cards uh, uh, in the last quarter, two quarters. That is definitely impacting us. And there is a huge slowdown in the American market for sure. Every company, I think, Q1, you take tire ones today. I think the first time in the history of this IT industry, there is the growth for even a tire one player like Infosys. There's a, TCS has grown the lowest in the last 25 years, I guess. I think this is very real time and, and, and a relatively small player of us, we are not insulated. We are still fighting back. We are trying to put back these revenues very, very clearly. And that's where the net growth is there. Still, we are not uh, degrowing and we are going to stay to our outlook and we'll make it happen. And we will definitely come with a, uh, you don't have to wait till 2030 for sure. We have given our three years, five years uh, forecast as well. So one of the things, Asha and Devaka, what we'll do is we'll put together a note here for our uh, shareholders and investors, uh, maybe in a week's time as well, and we'll upload it into our investor uh, uh, portal, which will have clarity towards all this as well. So in terms of uh, detail, in terms of what is the revenue exchange, what is our uh, medium-term goals, uh, you know, how we want to achieve this uh, goal, uh, we will try and put a kind of a PowerPoint, uh, which even we, uh, we probably had uh, shared with our uh, uh, board and other things. We will try and uh, articulate that as well, as how we have moved it from uh, the exit of 2021 to where we are today, what is the changes which has happened. Uh, and, and so there are a lot of these uh, old questions which keep coming back you know, in your questions as well. So we might as well, we'll probably have one uh, FAQ uh, you know, uh, answer put through there, uh, which will probably help everybody. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Thompson. The last question from the uh, Pushatam's mail is, uh, if KMPs of CRI have been so bullish about turnaround of CRI, why none of them have exercised their ESOP till date? I presume all of them negotiated from ESOP as part of their compensation before accepting the employment offer. Now, since we have received, uh, since we have started building pressure, Thompson is assuring that he will exercise some part of his ESOP. This is totally insane. I have never heard a case where other shareholders drive KMPs to exercise their ESOPs. Over to you, Thompson. No, no, fair question. I think we spoke about it in the last uh, meeting as well. So this is not a question of, you know, uh, I think we have to set uh, the baseline right, okay? 3i is a very unique organization uh, because we don't have a promoter, stated promoter. All of us have worked in multiple industries for a long time. All of us have exercised our ESOPs in our careers. It's very, very clear. We have all been part of all this. I think we should all be on the same page. This is the first time we have a, a, a small cap to a small to medium cap company which doesn't have a promoter. So we have to be sensitive to that, actually. Very, very similar. So the responsibility and accountability of the management team is enormous. And that I think I, I expect every shareholder to be sensitive towards that. So it's very, very important for that because it's a very unique scenario. But all said and done, said that, but definitely we, uh, me and my management team, we will now execute this, uh, you know, uh, uh, at the points like what Puru uh, spoke about. We will do that to show that how we are committed because we all signed up in this organization as entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs trying to turn around the company in the absence of a promoter. So we are sensitive to that and we will take accountability for that and we will do that. And we also help and uh, hope the same reciprocation from our shareholders. Thank you, Thompson. We will take next question, which we have received from Madhu Kumar, an individual investor. His first question is, the business plan and projected figures are not matching with reality. For example, you have promised a pack of rupees 30 crore for FY23, but we ended up with almost nothing. The plan for the business you promised was $1 million in uh, 2030. But at the rate of 8 to 9 percent growth, why, why it seems to be far away in reality. The fact for this financial financial year was projected more than the financial year in FY23, but Q1 started itself with 16 crore loss. So my question to you is: Are we projecting the business based on some facts or figures that are plucked from the air? Over to you, Sanjay. No, I, I'll try and first answer that. You know, I don't think uh, any of us, uh, you know, pluck any figures from the air. We are all serious businessmen, and I expect, uh, you know, the same reciprocation from uh, our shareholders as well, very, very clearly. Uh, to state the facts, uh, I will go one by one. One is, A, 
we we never told a pat of uh, even when we did the last year we did an outlook and a guidance we never gave a pat number we said we will hit 760 crores and we will do an ebit of the steep pros that was the stated things recordings can be taken facts are available please look at it i don't want to discuss about the variables which hit us from the past or whatever it is the reality is the reality we are taking that head on and we are trying to turn around the organization very very clearly so that's factually incorrect that is point number one uh, mr madhu. mr madhu i think that we, uh, it, it's factually incorrect the second point is very clearly uh, we spoke about uh, this billion dollar thing post the car wow when the company had no vision mission product sold which was left here we had to set a direction it's a direction for the organization we can be uh, you know we, we can be naysayers to that as different you set a direction where all of us work together and move towards that the second part is how do we do that even that i have repeatedly told about it and we are executing it systematically i told it in i think we should also probably uh, you know uh, this is like a repeat every time i keep talking about it a the traditional business is never going to get there no way is going to get a billion dollar traditional b2b business will get you only your on your growth wherever it is on going to there we spoke about b2b to b we have revenues which are there which we will probably articulate in our segment reporting as well where we'll say how to go b to b to c we have already demonstrated that we have got into this large project of pure bharat network you wait and watch you wait and watch how this revenue is going to happen that is the answer for me in terms of uh, you know all the naysayers in terms of how this is going to hit to 1 billion i'm very clear about it thank you thompson next question from madhu kumar is i see accounts payable more than 1000 crore and receivables around 369 crore how this how did this happen whom we pay the uh, whom we have to pay you always say it's a debt free company and auditors say a different story can you give clarification for this over to you sanjay yeah uh, so these are old intercompany outstanding balances for which uh, we are in the process of filing our application to rbi for set off of the old balances i think we did had take that in a earlier pause uh, as well so this would get done uh, now we are the final stages of processing our application with rbi and this should get done uh, by q2 of uh, this year further i would like to update that we we have already formed a sub committee of the board for reviewing and taking necessary action for legacy related matters which is chaired by our, our audit committee chairman mr uttam ji agarwal and we are further looking into the matter so that we can get it addressed uh, in total thank you sanjay uh, we will take next question which has came from shrikant kamar an individual investor his questions are the company other expenditure is rupees 30 crore is it an investment for future development uh we do not have such an amount of 30 crores under other expenses so would like to get more details in this regard the next question from his uh, from shrikant is the company owns the office or it is a leased one so we we have our own offices as well uh, which is at washi wherein we do most of our uh you know bpo related work and we had this earlier uh, given to agent show which had got back to us uh, in the last year but all our other offices uh, for corporate here in mumbai and other offices area offices in india and abroad are all leased thank you sanjay i will uh, hand over the floor now to uh, moderator for opening the q and a session we have finished all the questions taken uh, from the emails from the, which we have received from the investor thank you over to you moderator thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles we have a first question from the line of atmaram an individual investor please go ahead yeah uh, i hope i am audible mr thompson and the team uh, 
my question is uh, i'm a investor since 2010 uh very very frustrating uh i hear tall promises uh previously i had asked a question on uh, employee cost uh, employee cost keeps growing it's almost 70 80% of your entire revenue is your employee cost is it so difficult to rationalize the employee cost identify where you are in excess where you are actually spending your uh, manpower uh, why is it not uh, so why is it so difficult for years together uh, we keep on having these expenses so high i had asked you asked you the same question 9 months back after 9 months i'm still having to ask the same question i hope i don't get the same answer so uh, atram so what i will do i'll allow uh, my hr head to talk about us because he is driving some of these initiatives on a broad high level i will say definitely i agree with you Uh, for a services business where we are today, the huge biggest component is human resources. We have to continuously keep optimizing it, and we are doing that uh, systematically. And now, in an age of generative AI and you know large format, this is going to get disrupted very, very uh, you know in a big way. And we are also preparing to do that uh, as way forward is there, because whether we like it or not, technology is changing. It is going to change the way the mix of the business is going to happen. That's for sure. uh but uh, definitely we are uh, i'll allow uh, mohan to expand on exactly what steps he is taking to optimize and rationalize the satuma mohan if you can step in please so thanks something uh, hi everyone i'm glad glad connecting so very quickly going sharp into that uh, space <clears throat> it's a good observation in fact we we we've been uh, working on since beginning of this financial year we have identified pockets of uh, rationalization without impact on the business and also uh, continue to fund for the growth so it's a fine balancing act we trying to do uh, we have identified wherever the uh, opportunities in terms of spend rationalization uh, in terms of redundancy is existing because of the technology changes and we have in fact taken actions and we expect to see the financial outcome of those actions uh, trickle down from q2 onwards so we expect that uh, uh, employee cost as a percentage of revenue uh, to to rationalize to the extent of uh, uh, at a overall company level to 76% from 78% yeah uh, if i can just add i asked the same question 9 months back i got the same reply i don't see any change that's happening in the numbers Uh, because uh, you say employee cost as a part of revenue in these uh, days uh, where first of all the number of employees in these days of ai and ml uh, is it really uh, uh, required that you have so many low end employees in your entire structure is something that are not understood these are all very general answers that i get probably uh, my frustration will go to an extent that i book my losses and get out after 12 or 13 years of being with this company no no fair fair question so i think i'll take it a step back i think it's important for us to understand the nature of the business variance we are currently that for for classical as many number of years even before one and a half year back we have been organized as a business of bpo services and classic infrastructure services and front end application services which are extremely employee intensive operations we started making the shift in the last one and a half year so i want all of us to come back to the shift which is happening as of now so as we see our revenues from the newest technologies have started trickling in now and then and then rationalization in terms of that classical business so we cannot suddenly shift the entire business cycle for the purpose of its growth and stability so we continue to see the growth engine coming up and our investments in people are happening in the growth engines so i'm more than happy to have uh, some short calls to see where we are investing in people in new technologies and new business areas and how are we rationalizing and uh, 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 low low margin classical businesses while we continue to sustain them so i completely share your ranks and my my expectation is if you can continue to keep observing down the line next 12 months you will be able to see significant changes okay thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of narendra from robo capital please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity so uh, given the advent of the western markets 
are we still looking for a 1000 crore kind of revenue this year or are there any uh, shortfalls that you see there टारगेट ऑफ दिवन दार्केट इज इट No, so Narendra, just to set a context, right? You know, when we started two years ago, we set a goal saying that end of three years we'll be at thousand uh, crores. Uh, it's where our uh, you know short-term goals which we set for ourselves. Last year we exited. Uh, we were planning for seven sixty, and uh, we exited at seven thirty. Uh, but we had a good uh, you know uh, order book which we are now trying to execute this year. Uh, so if you ask me uh, our target will be to you know cross 850 this year and i clarified in my planning call also that when we quarter end we said that we want to exit this year with a 1000 crore run rate per month so that is a clear target we want to do so that when we exit this year we want to at least have a 1000 crore order book not revenue just to clarify okay okay got it and uh, any uh, any comments on the margins that you will be able to do in the Say next two three years is not short term then. Yeah, yeah. So even just stay focused on this year. If you look at it, even the previous question which Mr. Atmaram asked also. See, one of our biggest pressure is to change the margin mix, which we are been struggling, and we are slowly seeing that. If you see a quarter on quarter and a month on annual spread, we are already at around 16.5 percent in the gross margin levels. We want to take it up to almost 19-20 percent, which is very important for us. You know, by changing it, like what Mohan said, you know, we we need to change this value value mix. the volume mix is almost you know to the lower margin levels and the value is higher and now as the revenue mix is changing we'll see the change of that so definitely we want to target our 18 19 uh, for this year uh, and a more share of at least uh, the value business which has a average of you know 25 to 28% gm which is there for us and uh, that's the kind of you know direction we want to take uh, narendra okay thank you so much and all the best yeah thanks narendra thank you We have a next question from the line of Sanjay K, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, hi Thompson, and uh, this is Sanjay. So, uh, first of all, yeah, uh, we have seen the revenue, and there is a growth of two uh, percent plus, and a good uh, mix of and good increase in uh, growth revenue. Uh, and uh, considering the situation in market, and uh, we have seen a lot of uh, IT companies have shown a big growth, big growth in revenue, and. Uh, Still, uh, CI Corp has managed to get a two percent plus uh, increase. So, first of all, well done to your team and uh, good work. So, like we are expecting more increase in, uh, in revenue and uh, definitely uh, margins. So, my question is about uh, one is like how the cash flow looks like for the end of this quarter. Last quarter, it was about sixty one crore, and um, the cash flow situation now and. the office space which was uh, again uh, i think uh, last call you mentioned that uh, the office space something uh, got from agencio is still uh, need to be uh, utilized or return or uh, so uh, to be sold so what's the status on that and uh, second question is about uh, uh, realtel project uh, i think uh, sax has given some update but how the situation is now are we going to get any revenue in this quarter and uh, uh, how uh, how many uh, uh, i mean any big advertisers have been signed off or how the situation uh, in next two quarters how we look after uh, how we are looking for the revenue from this real estate project okay hey, great uh, uh, thanks for the kind words uh, sanjot and i'll allow uh, uh, you know uh, sanjay to speak on the cash flow and the washi property and then i'll kind of expand on the other questions for you Hi, Sir Jodhai. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, let me give a view of our cash flow that we uh, as of 30th of June. Uh, the total cash flow, uh, the cash in hand is about 45 crores, uh, which includes uh, earmark FDs for our uh, bank guarantee, which is 39 crores, and our cash balance in our bank is about 6 crores as of 30th of June. That's the first question. Uh, to address our washi property uh, we did get back uh, the two floors uh, that we we had given uh, for as issue the three floors uh, 
so our plan is to uh, get, get this model. So we are working on uh, a working capital arrangement with, uh, with the discussions are on with uh, on the final stages with most uh, in our, one of our bankers. So uh, the, the plan is to have the working capital, uh, you know, get uh, action done against mortgage of these three properties that we have uh, got in from Azincho Bank. Yeah, just to add to that, uh, Sanjay, in parallel also, see, we spoke about it. Uh, we are also trying multiple ways because, see, for us, when we started it, you know, when we, uh, the famous stuff, and I also saw some comments uh, saying that, you know, uh, we got a debt-free company, 100 crores in cash and all that, you know, we'll also try and put the FAQ up because this uh, washi was also included in that, you know, if you look at it from a planning perspective, as you rightly said, 50 crores was against that and we never got the uh, cash back in our books and uh, we just have the property. Uh, so fundamentally, immediately we are looking at multiple offer offers, so we are also looking at uh, sell and leases. Uh, sure. Yeah, so the, the purpose is that, uh, Sanjot, so that, you know, we are able to uh, generate liquidity immediately uh, so that uh, that will answer some of the cash questions which have been asked because that's the concern uh, for us and we are working towards that. We have to fix it uh, to keep us uh, uh, moving. Um, and second also is that, uh, uh, since you asked it and maybe others might have similar questions, we are also trying to unlock the value of some of the investments we have made as well. Uh, and as you know, you have been very clearly, uh, closely following us. Uh, some of the new ray products and platform, this year we are trying to unlock that as well. So that will also be a, a way to infuse uh, capital because there is a lot of interest in the market for some of these products. We are now trying to see how we could, uh, you would have seen that we have created some uh, subsidiaries. We are now trying to see how we can unlock the value. So we will, you will hear more of that. These are uh, ways by which we want to infuse capital uh, into the company as well. The third thing is the Nure Bharat Network, uh, which is Railtel as well. Uh, to your point, uh, Sachs did speak about it. Uh, he, he did touch about it. To your point, Q2, uh, now we are commercially ready, right? You know, it's all ready, uh, and uh, we are now uh, building the funnel and closing it. Um, we have a funnel of around 50, 60 crores uh, right now, uh, uh, Sanjot, and uh, we are hopeful that we can close a few deals immediately. Uh, when I say 50, 60 crores, uh, these are uh, annual contract values, okay? So because the advertisement contracts are for a year or some of them for two years, uh, kind of thing. And uh, immediately we are focusing on the sponsors and the co-sponsor uh, blocks. Uh, so we are selling off the first the sponsorship, uh, which is like uh, like a primary sponsor. If you look at our, if you go to any of our uh, railway stations, you will see that the banner, which is there, it will say like a sponsored in the when you log in, and then the co-sponsors, those slots are being uh, sold off. So that will take care of our break-even or other cost, uh, fundamentally. Central. So fundamentally, as I explained before, uh, we have the minimum guarantee of uh, 14 crores plus our operating cost. So uh, if you are able to close these deals, uh, that will be taken care of for our uh, uh, this year's requirement. And all that other stuff which SAC spoke about will add uh, to that. You know, in terms of uh, revenues which come from Google integration, already the first few dollars have started flowing automatically. Now we'll have to figure out how to get more uh, better quality content and do that. And third, also monetization of content as well. So all this will start keying in. But our primary focus is to get our bread and butter sponsor and co-sponsor ads out of the way, uh, Sanjo. Yeah, Th thank you, Thompson. I just have a last question about uh, how the business looks like now. I mean, considering like uh, situation in US and uh, Europe. So, uh, how the pipeline uh, in the UK, Europe, and US? I mean, you can just highlight like how the big businesses are in pipeline, or uh, how this, uh, are the uh, uh, wins are uh, the, the number of deals you are working on increasing uh, in US and uh, Europe regions. See, uh, uh, as I said, uh, Sanjot, see, U.S. and any of the Western geographies are a challenge. There are a lot of headwinds. Uh, but what we are getting is also, see, there are a lot of uh, relatively uh, uh, challenger deals available. What I'm saying is what the tire ones uh, are refusing to reduce or whatever it is, there is an opportunity for us. But that will be a problem, uh, a relative problem. Say, for example, a normal deal which might give up 40% GM in U.S., uh, Sanjot, is available at 25% GM or 22% GM because the customer also wants to optimize. So those type of deals are, are there, but it's good enough for us right now. So we are focusing on some of those challenger deals, uh, at least in our existing account, that is one. Uh, right now, also I said, we won a, a TCB of almost 2.4 million uh, in our existing account across various lines of business. So predominantly, these are uh, value businesses which uh, you know customers are buying from us relatively, which are more higher price by tier one players.